Great. Yeah. Brilliant. <clears throat> Uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, we are um, presenting some information about the refurbishment grants program and the youth investments fund refurbishment grants program, I should say. Uh, my name is Patrick. I'm the senior relationship manager at Resonance. Resonance are one of the partners of the youth investment fund um, and our patch, so to speak, is um, West Midlands and Midlands generally, sorry, in the Southwest as well. I'm joined by my colleagues as well from the other partners. So I will allow them to introduce themselves, starting with Barbara. Hi, I'm Barbara Lua. Um, I am a customer support officer at SIP, who are managing and coordinating the youth investment plans with our partner organizations. Um, and Alex. Hello, everyone. I'm Alex. I'm from uh, the Key Fund, um, and we're dealing with applications in the North of England uh, for this side of the fund. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so, for those who don't know much about the Youth Investment Fund, it is um, over 300 million of government funding, uh, and it is to invest or create, expand, and improve local youth facilities and their services in the out of school sector, um, youth sector that is, um, to derive positive outcomes for young people, including improved mental and physical well-being and skills for life and work. Uh, we are asking applicants to the fund to demonstrate the capital project represents value for money, which we'll talk about in a bit later, um, environmentally sustainable and enables those positive activities referred to above for young people aged 11 to 18 or up to 25 for young people with special educational needs and disabilities. We've received over 300 applications to date and we've now had three grants committees and committed funds of over 140 million. Uh, to date, sort of since it opened last year in the last six months or so, we have been concentrating on large applications and large projects. Um, this is because the funding uh, needs to be dispersed and, and spent by grantees by March 2025. So that means the projects to be completed. And because of that, we've been prioritizing those larger projects where the capital build time will take much longer um, in an effort to make sure they, they all get over the finish line, so to speak, um, in time. But um, throughout the last six months, we've been listening to smaller organizations and contacts in the youth sector and um, try to develop now this refurbishment program that is responsive to um, their needs. And that is how we've arrived at the refurbishment grant program. I'll hand over to Alex now to tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, so I'm going to talk through um, the parameters of what this side of the fund will be looking at, the small refurbs strand and a bit about um, what you could be doing with the funding. So um, eligibility remains the same as with the main fund. If you're not familiar with that, then um, the first place I would go is to our FAQs. It lays out everything. Um, but mainly for you to know is that you need to be in an eligible postcode. There is a postcode checker there. Um, if this site that you're thinking about for this fund is in a different one to um, one you've maybe been considering before, or, um, or if you're based somewhere and the site you want to renovate is in a different area, just check that the site you want to renovate is in an eligible postcode. Really important. Don't sink time into an application that isn't eligible. The other things in terms of legal structure, um, I would definitely have a, a check on the FAQs. It fully lays out what sort of organizations can apply, but we're expecting to see a lot of scouts, a lot of charities, a lot of those sorts of organizations that want to um, you know, renovate things for youth work. Um, so we're going to touch on youth work in a later slide and what is that open access youth work that we're looking for. The maximum amount we will be considering is £150,000. That includes uh, revenue funding and um, VAT contingencies. Contingencies, while it's mentioned, we are looking at about 10% as a recommended rate. And that's because there's quite a high inflationary environment at the moment. Um, it's worth considering that your prices as quoted might rise. Um, if you're not putting in that 10% contingency, then we'd probably want a really good reason why not. The minimum amount we're going to be looking at is £10,000. And it's just to set a floor. Um, so bear that in mind when considering when you're going to apply. We're only looking at applications that don't require planning permission. Um, the whole idea of this side of the fund is that we have projects that can have a really quick turnaround and can be doing things for young people in a really short space of time. Um, we don't want something like planning permission with all of its uncertainties sort of throwing things off. So we will only be considering um, projects that don't need planning permission. If you need planning permission, you can apply still through the main fund, even if the project costs less than £150,000. So um, that's the direction you should be going down. 
just apply the normal way. We're looking at single sites with at least a five year lease. And that at least is really important. If you're asking for more money, then we're probably gonna want to see a longer lease. But we want it to be commensurate with the amount being spent. Um, and we want to know that that high amount of money is gonna be used for young people for a long way down the line. Um, five years is a minimum, but we would love to see more. So um, yeah, bear that in mind. It will be on a sort of case by case basis that we do consider the application there, uh, but minimum five years. We want at least one eligible youth activity. Um, we're going to touch on eligible youth activities in a later slide. Um, but you know, you could be offering a portfolio of different services. We just, for this side of the fund, want to see one eligible youth activity. So it doesn't need to be a majority of your offering, but it would help. Like the main fund, um, we're offering revenue funding. Patrick's going to talk about that in a bit. Um, but it would definitely be worth considering it as part of your fund, uh, a part of your bid, um, that you could maybe spend that on your youth services as you release the new building um, in its finished state or help you get to its finished state. And we are looking at bids that have a short turnaround, as I mentioned before. So we want things that are going to be able to begin works immediately or very soon. Um, and we want to be funding projects that can be finished within 12 months. Of course, if you, this is a building that belongs to you or you're using it, you're gonna want those works completed as soon as possible anyway. So um, get applying and get that project turned around quickly. Um, we're not really looking at anything that's gonna be completed a long way down or downstream. Um, so what could you be spending the money on? This is a pretty good list. We think we have a, pretty, a reasonably comprehensive list of things you can be using the funding for. As you go through the application form, you'll find that you can select different types of things you can use the funding for. You can fund multiple different types and categories of projects. Um, so if you want to do insulation and you also wanted to fit a new kitchen, that would be completely eligible. Um, you just have to sort of select each one of those. How much is each one of those going to cost? It's reasonably self-explanatory as you go through the form. Um, there are some of the things, if there's something not there that you would like to fund and you think it sounds otherwise eligible, then do chuck us an email. Um, there's an email on the last slide of the presentation. Um, just send a question and say, hey, could we fund this? Um, and maybe it's something we've not considered, but um, we'll try and work with you there. Uh, the next slide shows um, things that we're not that interested in doing. Um, so if these four things here form the majority of what you're asking for, then um, it's not really for this fund. Um, we're not wanting to do anything that's a majority landscaping, majority just redecoration. We want to see quite substantial changes. Um, with solar panels and heat pumps, they're a great idea, they're environmentally beneficial, but at 150,000 pounds, we think the money's better deployed through insulation um, and things like that. And um, we want to generate real good value for money. Um, so yes, those four things, it could be part of a wider ask, um, but it can't be the majority. So if you are getting new windows and insulation, then maybe you could consider uh, a solar panel here and there. But yeah, I'd avoid those four uh, where possible. So over to Patrick, who's muted. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just to talk a bit about the application process and on the last slide as well um to mention about the reason for some of those exclusions is is around that um being able to demonstrate the expansion or preservation of your youth activities so it's a bit difficult for those those four sort of um mentioned excluded um projects to demonstrate those on their own um on the application process um we launched the form on the 28th of march um so last week and we've initially focused on existing applicants so that's applicants that have already applied um, to the Youth Investment Fund um, that we think meet the criteria. So we've been focused on contacting those organizations, getting the form out to them um, and seeing if we can get them through this initial application window. Um, that uh, the way organizations are applying um, is through a traditional application form. So it's focused on gathering key information, um, again, with the view of making um, a quick uh, or forming a quick view uh, and short assessment process and focusing on clarifying information rather than asking for heaps of additional information. Uh, again, to shorten the application process, we've got a one stage approval um, with monthly assessment panel meetings. Um, so in order to facilitate this shorter turnaround and monthly um, assessment panels, we've, we are using fixed application windows within which you can submit your application for a grant. Um, so that 
means in terms of how this works on our system. Uh, you can access the application form and complete it and save it during that application window. But if that application window shuts, you won't be able to access your application form. So although the information will still be saved there until the next window, you can't actually access it. Um, so we will provide a downloadable version of the form so you can work on it offline. Um, and that may be sort of your preferred route to work on it offline until you're ready to submit within a window and then pull it across, um, because otherwise it, it may be a little bit frustrating. Um, our application windows are, are set out in the slide there. So um, as I mentioned, we, we opened for first applications um, last week, and that closes on the 11th of April. Uh, again, we've been encouraging um, uh, current applicants to sort of get their applications in in this round, but we are open to new applications as well. So by all means, if you have a, a capital project that's well developed and ready to go, please um, do aim to get your application in during this window. But we do have a second and final application window at the end of April and the end of May, respectively. Uh, at the moment, we don't have any plans for additional application windows. This may change, um, but it will be based on sort of demand and how much um, funding we've committed from this fund by the end of the, these three windows. Um, by using these fixed application windows and sort of um, streamlining our processes, we're really hoping we can turn around most of these applications in six weeks. Um, and if not, we will contact you to, to give you more information on that as soon as we can. Um, and again, just to reiterate that point, we, we do encourage early applications if your capital project is at that suitably advanced stage. And getting on to the actual detail of the application form, um, if you're used to um, uh, or experienced in applying for, for grants, um, hopefully there won't be anything too surprising in the form. Um, we ask background information on your organization type, your mission and activities, and sort of your staff and volunteer numbers. Um, we then go on to ask about details of your capital project, so a bit of information and a description of the works and the need for the works, and then um, the detailed sort of cost information that Alex referred to earlier in terms of the different sort of um, elements of works within your capital project. And we also then ask some questions on open access youth provision. Um, so this is about the youth activities you provide. Um, by filling in this information, it helps us identify um, the activities that you deliver that are eligible um, for the fund. So it, it's an eligibility check to some extent, but then also it helps us to sort of track our own outcomes or targeted outcomes for the fund. So we can track sort of how many young people are accessing your services now and then in the future after the capital project is completed. Uh, as Alex mentioned earlier, there is the option to request some revenue funding. Um, and we've sort of four categories um, under which you can request revenue funding. The first one is project management costs to oversee the project, which is um, self-explanatory. Then there's overheads during the project. Um, so that could be, for example, relocation costs um, if you're unable to use um, the, the facilities until the project's complete, for example. Uh, expansion costs, which could be sort of additional staff um, or, or to take on um, new youth workers for a period of time, uh, and project delivery costs in year one, uh, potentially as well. So that might be things around, for example, marketing um, to get the word out there um, about your, your youth offer to try and expand the number of young people um, attending your services. Uh, we also um, request some support important documents along with your application form. Again, this is to enable us to sort of assess everything up front and hopefully not come back to you with too many other questions. Um, so we've asked for your last set of financial accounts, um, which generally should show um, figures for your last two years. Uh, a recent set of management accounts. Um, so these are sort of your in-year um, management figures that you might report to your board um, about to sort of track your expenditure for the year. Um, as we've just finished sort of a lot of organizations financial year, it might be that you can provide management accounts for sort of 23 or 22, 23, uh, or your draft year end accounts, for example. Uh, and we also ask for your budget for the current financial year. Um, so at a basic level, that would be sort of what you've budgeted under different sort of subcategories for the year and how you're performing against it to date. So your actual figures. Um, 
another document we're requesting is your overall project budget. So that is, this is to capture all the elements um, of your funding together. So this is the capital, the revenue, but also sort of any pre-construction work you might have had to fund as well. So we get a real overall picture of your project. Uh, and then we've asked for um, some photographs internally and externally, um, which gives us a really good idea of, of the work. That's a visual idea of the work that, that needs to be done. And finally, um, we asked for quotations. Um, so um, towards the end of this slide, we'll, we'll talk a bit more to that, but we would expect you to sort of have some sort of costings or quotations, um, which you can upload with the application. And just a final note is we realize it's a whole range of organizations in terms of size that will apply to this fund. Um, so uh, for smaller organizations, we we will be assessing relative to, to the, your size. So sort of the support and financial information you provide, we realize might not be as detailed as some larger organizations, um, but we would expect sort of as a minimum, those, those top three bullet points to be able to give us um, your financial accounts, some sort of uh, management accounts and some overall sort of headline budget for the year and, and actuals as well. Uh, and I'm just gonna hand over to Barbara to talk a bit about some of the application or questions we've got um, so far. So um, just like the main fund, um, the refurb has a commitment to transform and level up in the outer school sector through funding, open access, youth provision, so what do we mean by open access youth provision? Um, so that includes the ability for children and young people to self-refer, apply to join, or in other ways access a provider setting on terms that are designed for them and don't depend on a parent, guardian, or agency referrals. And also offering leisure, physical, education, and other activities that have the primary attention of benefiting young people's social welfare, and developing their skills for life and work and supporting a healthy and happy transition to adulthood. So what do we mean by preservation and expansion? So expansion allows you to reach additional young people, for example, renovation of a roof space to create additional room, allowing you to add new activities or create an accessible toilets so that more young people can access your activities and preservation includes essential work without some or all of young people currently accessing your service will be unable to do so. So for example, damp proof in an area which was at risk of becoming unsafe for delivery of youth activities or installation to ensure the quality of service is maintained. So um, anything to do before you apply. So ideally applications will be submitted with at least one recent quote. Um, as a minimum, we expect costing exercise to be, have been completed for the works and that you're in the process of seeking quotes. So those applications will be prioritized. Um, three like for like quotes for the work to be obtained before payment is made to ensure value for money for the taxpayer and just on value for money. So the best, best mix of quality and effectiveness for the least outlay over the period of use of the goods or services bought. Now back to Patrick. Great, thank you. Yeah, so that last value for a money quote is sort of a, a government quote. So again, it's just um, recognizing that these this funding is, is from government funding and we have a responsibility to ensure and value for money and one way of doing that um, especially under this strand is to ensure there's three competitive quotes obtained um so that's um the presentation finished um we can answer questions now you can also email us um at yif at sibgroup.org.uk with questions um with um, our customer team there um, can respond to, to any and all questions there. And we have our FAQs. So if you visit the Youth Investment Fund website, you should now see sort of at the top um, a refurbishment grant um, that section that you can click on. And it outlines sort of a lot, a lot of detail, the FAQs that we sort of expect might come for this fund. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Um, and we can then maybe sort of try and deal with some of these Q and A's. Uh, my screen is frozen. <laughs> can everyone, uh, Alex and Barbara, has my screen um, come off for both of you? Uh, we can still see you, yeah, but it's not sharing the PowerPoint anymore. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Um, so maybe if we look at some of the um, 
questions that we've got in the chat so far. Yeah, so um, a question we've got is, um, we were successful in the main round. Can we apply for to refurbish some of our old buildings but on our site? Mm. What do we need to demonstrate for the refurbishment grants? I.e. presumably we need to show that we can increase our provision or expand our activities and numbers, etc. So, um, Patrick? Right. Yes, um, I can take this one. So um, <clears throat> if you've been successful with the main fund, you, you can't apply um, to the refurbishment grant program. So uh, this is a sort of a, a separate strand um, and uh, yeah, organizations um, that have benefited from the main fund. It's, it's still all part of the youth investment fund. So you can't benefit twice from the fund is essentially um, what it boils down to. <laughs> but on the wider point on um, what do we need to demonstrate? Again, it's about that expansion and, and preservation of activities that Barbara mentioned. So um, we're really looking for organizations to be able to demonstrate that the work will expand um, on activities, um, no matter how um, modestly um, are preserving. So where you're um, at risk of sort of losing numbers or having to close certain things, or you, you, you have closed in the past certain activities because of the, the sort of state of the building, the, the repair it's in, um, then um, it's sort of demonstrating that as a, the underlying need. Um, is that, I don't know if Alex, if you wanted to pitch in on that, or if that sounds good for you. Sounded good to me, yeah. Um, just another question, yeah, we've got a few. So um, from Debbie Jones, if we've sub already submitted an EOI for the main fund, but this is looking unlikely due to, due to time scales with planning permission and panel dates, can we apply for the refurbishment grant? Patrick or Alex? Um, I think, yeah, go ahead, Alex. Uh, I'd say to Debbie, um, if you need planning permission, then um, we won't be able to do any of that within the refurbishment um, stream. If you have elements of work that you are really keen to be done that still fit all of our criteria, um, then it might be worth discussing this with your relationship manager, who I assume would be more familiar with your case and could maybe advise on the sort of what you could be looking at there. Um, there is a specify, uh, there's a special link we can send you out if you're already in the process with the main fund um, that should help you with the application process and rework your, you into a um, small refurbishment um, application. So um, get in contact with your relationship manager and uh, have an ask with them. And um, if you don't know who your relationship manager is, then um, send an email to YIF inquiries and say, can I get in touch with my relationship manager about changing to a small refurbishment grant? It's something you'll have to look at with what you want to be doing and um, make that decision yourself. Uh, I, I don't know whether you can jointly pursue both, uh, but I suspect not. Okay, we've got a question from Sally. Um, on 14th Hove, I received an invite to the seminar, but I haven't received an application form. How do I access the form? Um, the form is now live on the website. So if you just go on the Youth Investment Fund website, um, just not to be confused with the form for the main fund, if you scroll down at the bottom, it should take you to that application form. Um, got a question from John McCoy. Will these slides be emailed out? Um, I this session is being recorded and the slides, I think, will become available. Um, just confirm with Patrick. Yeah, so um, we won't be emailing the slides out, but this session um, is being recorded and will um, be on the yeah. Investment Fund website. So you'll be able to access the slides in that way and, and the presentation. Okay, um, we've got an anonymous question. Um, are staff salaries included in permissible costs to deliver the youth prohibitions? taking place in the refurbished venues on the project delivery course? Um, so yes, um, staff salaries, um, for example, the uh, <clears throat> sort of, um, related to the, the delivery of the youth services. So um, a youth worker salary, for example, um, I'm just getting, uh, and that would um, come, come under your expansion costs, for example, um, if you were expanding your youth activities, um, where it's sort of you're maintaining um, or preserving youth offer, then I suppose the expectation with the, the funding should be in, in place to maintain them um, beyond the life of the project already. Um, so yeah, if if you're linked with an expansion of your youth offer, then those four headings um, do allow for you to include um, salary costs for the first year. 
Okay, so from Sam, you said we, would, we wouldn't be able to apply for storage facilities. However, we would like to renovate our boat storage and maintenance workshop, which we would use for our explorers to walk, work on the boats as well as to store them. Do you think this would be eligible? Uh, that's a really interesting question. And I think that's why it shows that if you have sort of specific you can never say never sometimes because I think it's being able to make that case for the expansion or preservation of your youth activities. So, um, so storage facilities on, on the face of it, it's something that we we wouldn't be funding. Um, but if it's a workshop in, included in that and sort of it's an overall project um, that will help either expand or preserve your youth offer, then then and you think you can make that case for it, then then by all means do apply. Um, and we will sort of on a case by case basis consider that. OK, so we've got Phil from Edward's house. We are part of a con we're part of a contest. Sorry, my English. <laughs> we're part of a contestium bid to the larger fund. Can we apply in our own right to the smaller fund? Um, uh, it's. Uh, it depends. I'm not sure what um you mean by consortium bid. So I'd I'd say if you drop us an email to um uh the the if team about that. But um if you're sort of um a key part of an application to the main fund, um I'd say or or you're the lead applicant, then then no. Um, it would depend in what way you're sort of partnered or your relationship to the to the applicant to, to the main fund is. So definitely um, that's one to drop us uh, an email about and we can look into for you. Um, I don't want to um, give an answer in this session in case I give you the wrong one without all the full details. Um, but um, it is intended that the that sort of the that um, that this is part of one wider fund. So um, organizations shouldn't benefit twice, if that makes sense. Um, under this fund uh, and the other sort of strand of the fund. Okay, um, question from Sally from 14th Hove. We received the pre-construction grant, but we haven't heard about the main grant other than we met the criteria. If we haven't heard back, do we assume that we are not getting the funding? Um, I would say no. Um, it's, application is probably um, either under assessment or on hold. Um, if you drop an email, we can um to the with to the email we can find out the status of your application. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, question from Matt Salvage. We have taken a lease on assignment for a property that we'll use for youth provision, but needs refurbishment with four four years and ten months left on the lease. We will be negotiating a a new fifteen year lease. Does it need to be over the line before applying? Um, local authority legal team has estimated seven months turnaround. Uh, again, a really good question. Um, I think if you can provide um, sort of a letter of, of, of support or, or something from your uh, local authority that sort of shows that, that there's an intention to award that new lease and we'll consider it. Um, and I suppose the other thing to say is this is obviously a competitive grants fund. So it's something we we take into consideration. And it may be, you know, if, if it's a very competitive um, round, if we have organizations in there that have their lease secured already and in place, and then that's something we, we will take into consideration. OK, I've just got one last question. Would refurbishing external areas also be covered by the scheme? For example, pothole driveways or tarmacking extremely muddy paths to a building set back from the road. I'll let Alex answer that one. <laughs> um, that would probably come into landscaping, which is on those list of four things that we're, we're keen to avoid. If it was part of a wider scheme of works, so if there were other things that you were doing, then um, we might consider it. It probably wouldn't be the majority of um, what we would be considering as part of a bid, though. Um, but we can't do stuff that is just, say, a car park or a path or something like that. It's landscaping and it doesn't really satisfy the uh, youth additionality that we're looking for. OK, and I've got a question from Sally. Um, can you remind us of the items we can apply for? I've written down roof works, insulation, bathroom, boiler, doors and windows, but didn't manage to get the rest. Um, uh, testing our um, a memory there as well um i'd say go on our website and you can see a full list of um those sort of things but um quickly writing it off 
and I am cheating and reading the screen. Uh, roof works, accessibility, adjustments, insulation, fitting a new boiler, window doors, fitting of new bathrooms and toilets, fitting of a new kitchen, damp roofing and plastering, rewiring or electrical works, and moving or removing internal walls. It's not an exhaustive list, it's just those that we think um, are sort of the most common um, elements of, of capital, um, small capital projects that we will see. Um, so there is a, an option to select other. Um, so when you're compiling your budget, you, you click to add additional sort of amounts and, and categories and you can assign an, another category as well. Um, but um, we, if you've got something that seems like a, a, not an obvious, um, thing to include under a small capital project do again contact us and clarify it with us because um, we um, certainly don't want to waste anyone's time to apply for projects that um, aren't likely to get funded we'd rather sort of have that honest conversation with you um, up front okay and um, sally just said thanks for answering my question brilliant and um, is that all our questions that's all the questions yeah. Uh, fantastic. Um, on our website uh, for the, the refurbishment programme, we've got a whole list of FAQs about the process and the parameters of the fund, details, the application windows, um, what we're expecting to see. We also have advice there um, for when you are getting quotes, so um, how you should go out to seek those quotes, so sort of what information you should tell contractors um when they uh when you're seeking a quote um to make sure that you're getting sort of like for like quotes back so you can make sure you're getting the best um value for money um so yeah all that information is on the website under the faq so please do um, read them in detail um before and alongside um submitting your application uh, and as mentioned please do contact us if you have any questions no um question is a stupid question capital projects um can be complex even the smallest and, and what might seem the simplest um so we're really um keen to talk to you and, and help clarify your situation and hopefully help you um get to a position where you can apply or if if we don't think um you've a good prospect of success so that we can let you know you're unlikely to get um, a grant but that seems like a very negative way to end this <laughs> uh, but uh, what, what I'd like to, what I, I suppose I'm trying to say is we really want to um, support organizations as best we can through this process so do get in touch um, and I think that um, probably wraps everything up um, so if you have any other questions do get in touch and we hope um, you have a good afternoon and rest of the week thank you thanks everyone Thank you, everyone.